I am in charge of emergency preparedness for the campus. I'm in charge of all of the campus's major emergency plans, which cover how the campus responds to different emergency situations. The biggest thing to remember in any emergency is that during the initial stages of the emergency, the initial few hours, even days sometimes, people who are affected by the emergency are going to be on their own. There's only so many fire engines in the county, there's only so many ambulances, and there's only so many police officers. The best way you can accomplish this is by making a plan for your own home, making an idea of how you can take care of yourself. In case of an emergency, you guys, we got to run all the way here and we'll meet at the park, okay? okay? Okay. Making sure you have some supplies that will help you deal with those initial hours. You should have food that is shelf-stable, doesn't require refrigeration. This could be canned food, this could be... Uh, packaged food. It should be something that you normally would like to eat. A disaster is stressful enough that you don't want to have to be eating food that you don't like. It just adds one more stress to it. You should have water. The general recommendation is at least two quarts of water per person in your family for at least three days, but preferably longer. Other supplies you want to think about having on hand include having a pair of sturdy shoes that you can put on in case there's broken glass or other things that could injure your feet. So think about getting battery-powered lanterns. Again, those can be used inside or outside. A gas-powered lantern you wouldn't want to have inside your house, again, for the fire hazard or for the, uh, the carbon monoxide hazard that results from that. If there's an earthquake and you're indoors, the best step to take is to duck, cover, and hold. You want to get underneath a piece of sturdy furniture, a desk, a table, something that's going to be able to withstand anything falling on it. You want to get under there, you want to crouch down, cover the back of your neck, and you want to hold on to the furniture so that it does not move away while the earth is shaking. You want to stay in that location until after everything stops shaking. At that point, you can assess whether there's any structural hazards, whether there's any reason to evacuate the building and go outside.